Mankind's demand for energy continues to rise, and fossil fuels are not only harmful to the climate, but also limited. For example, we will run out of oil before the end of this century, and the loss of this important resource could fuel global tensions. Solar energy is already a fantastic alternative in sunny places. We have already made a video about how space travel has helped the solar industry and how corporations, especially in the US, have tried to discredit this form of energy production. However, this video is not about solar panels installed on Earth, like on the roof of a house, although you should seriously consider this if you own a home, and this is not the case so far, but about energy production in space. But first, our sponsor of the video. Neotric Power is a solar company based in Orange County, California. Most of our audience is also from the US, and many of them are based in California. Sven, who writes the scripts and produces the videos, also lives there and knows the owners personally. He is convinced of solar energy, which is why we can only recommend this solar company. California has already hit the 1 million solar roof milestone. If you live in SoCal and want to save money on energy costs, learn more about current incentives or tax credits, Call or email them, because never before has it been more rewarding than now. Sunlight that can be converted on Earth into electrical energy is limited, even though more solar energy reaches the Earth each hour than mankind uses in one year. On the one hand, there is the natural day-night change. And on the other hand, the sun does not always shine everywhere through cloud coverage. In addition, about 30% of sunlight is reflected back into space by the Earth's atmosphere. These problems would be solved abruptly if solar energy were collected in space. Concepts of this kind are called Space-Based Solar Power SBSP. Already today, energy collection is taking place in space as satellites and the ISS have solar panels that harness the sun's energy. In the future, satellites or giant mirrors could absorb radiation from the sun and transmit this energy to Earth as microwave or laser radiation. Even Nikola Tesla was convinced of wireless power transmission Although Elon Musk once called the idea of space-based solar power. Let me tell you one of my pet peeves, space solar power. Okay, the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> um, and, and if anybody should think, should like space solar power, it should be me. All right, I got a, I got a rocket company and a solar company. <laughs> I mean, I should be like, I should be really on it, you know. Um, but, but it's like super obviously not going to work because um, you know, if you have solar panels, because first of all, it has to be better than having solar panels on Earth, right? So then you say, okay, solar panel uh, is in orbit. You get twice the solar energy, assuming that it's out, the, out of Earth's shadow, but you've got, to, you've got to do a double conversion. So you've got to convert it from, uh, you, know, you know, photon to electron to, to photon back to electron. Um, and so, so you've, got, you, you've got to make this double conversion. So, okay, what's your conversion efficiency? Hmm. I mean... Unlike a space station in low Earth orbit, which inevitably enters the Earth's shadow each time it orbits, a satellite far enough from Earth would not have these problems and would receive permanent sunlight with no day-night changes, no clouds, and no atmosphere to scatter the light. It could thus convert more sunlight into electrical energy. So far, the biggest stumbling block to this is the launch costs of the satellites. There are also some technical problems, not just the conversion efficiency mentioned by Elon Musk or the enormous effort to maintain the satellites. If the satellites were in a geostationary orbit, they would be in sync with the Earth's rotation, 
and would be permanently over the same point on Earth, which is advantageous because it would not be necessary to aim at the energy beam at a moving target. However, such an orbit would be 36,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface. And in the case of microwave radiation, huge antennas and mirrors would be needed to transport the energy beam. In addition, one would need kilometer-sized receiving stations on the Earth's surface since the beam would propagate considerably over a large distance. Therefore, smaller satellites in a low Earth orbit, which send a laser beam to Earth, seem to be the better alternative from today's point of view, especially since laser beams are much more focused than microwave beams. However, one would need a whole armada of these, and while one could send gigawatts to the Earth with the microwave solution, the smaller, laser-operated satellites could only beam down kilowatts, though one could act here very purposefully and beam the energy where only need prevails. Such a concept was first mentioned in Isaac Asimov's 1941 short story, Reason, in astounding science fiction. And in 1968, the idea was taken up by Peter Glaser, president of the International Solar Energy Society. In 1979, NASA also looked into the project, but it calculated the cost at several hundred billion dollars, so the project was not pursued at first. It was not until September 15th 2012, that the concept study for SPS Alpha Solar Power Satellite via arbitrarily large phased array was published, a facility that is part of NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts NIAC program and could provide up to 1,000 megawatts of power. Besides China and Japan, Former NASA scientist John Mankins and Ali Hajimiri of the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, are currently working on this idea. The latter is planning maintenance-free, square kilometer sized solar systems in space. The first step, however, is to develop more efficient solar cells and the possibility of converting them into microwaves with a high degree of efficiency. These are then sent bundled to antennas on Earth and converted into electrical energy. The plant should be ready by 2030.